The second day of November brings prime conditions. Clear skies make way for a vibrant sunrise as frost covers every surface. Drake Lamb takes advantage of these conditions as he sits a stand in southern Iowa. Alright, morning of November 2nd, sweet November. Feels awesome to be in a tree. Bill and I just got back from a good week of hunting in uh, northeast Iowa and uh, almost killed a good buck yesterday. But uh, I got a day to hunt here, so trying to make the best of it. We're back in here on this big CRP piece, and I don't have any bucks on camera. I only got one camera. I haven't even checked it on this piece, so we have no idea what's here. Um, we hunted here in mid-October just to kind of observe, see what these deer were doing. And this ridge uh, of bedding over my left shoulder here is kind of where all the action is, but we're kind of on a pinch point. Anything working this edge should give us a shot. We got a good trail going into this big standing cornfield behind us. Um, it's got to be a couple hundred acres over here standing corn. I don't know. Our plan is just to kind of sit here and see what happens. Like I said, we don't know what's here, but it only takes a rat buck uh, to come by. So never know. It's November. As Drake scans the CRP for the shine of antler, 85 miles to the northeast, team member Matt Tatey is tucked into one of his best spots. Is that buck still in velvet? Is that a doe? Matt's action is steady, but nothing mature makes its way into range and the quest for the split G3 buck continues. Ready? Yep. Drake Lamb also wraps up the morning before checking his trail cameras to gain much needed information on where best to hunt this afternoon. 70 miles to the east, Mike Reed is on the river farm, continuing his pursuit of the old 10-pointer named Marino. The action is slow for Mike, only does come within sight. Smallest one I have ever seen this time of year. Look like it was born last week. That's crazy. Owen Riegler also has a slow hunt while targeting the buck he calls Picket Fence. 
causing him to consider hunting a different farm. That evening in northern Missouri, Tyler Bailman decides to go right back to the same redneck line where he encountered Wishbone the day before. With bulletproof entry and exit using the corn maze, Tyler's confidence is high. Hey guys, it's the evening of November the 2nd. It's the opening day of Missouri's U season, so we're supporting the orange here. Uh, Justin and I have slipped back into the redneck blind where we had a really good hunt last night and had a uh, wishbone at 45 yards, but unfortunately we ran out of camera light. Very similar to conditions uh, as to yesterday, but uh, high of 40s, perfect bluebird day. We know he's in this area. He's been all over the cuttybacks and we feel like we just have to be here and uh, he was pretty occupied with that doe last night they felt comfortable they ended up bedding down in this clover plot and we slipped right out of here so hopefully they get up on their feet tonight and feed a little bit differently and present us an opportunity Tyler's hunt starts off promising, with plenty of activity on the plot. Now, it is a waiting game. 190 miles to the northwest, back in southern Iowa, Drake Lamb sits the CRP farm he received permission to hunt, and he has reason to be there, a very giant reason. That's one that we came through before. Mm -mm. It is the second, and Tyler and I are set up in this big CRP bottom. It's a permission farm that I got over the summer. We decided to check a camera. You know, kind of throughout the summer, we didn't have any pictures of anything decent, and you know, we were just kind of just banking on the rut. And sure enough, uh, we got a slammer showing up here. He's been here the past four out of eight days or something like that. Uh, daylight uh, multiple times hitting these scrapes and these scrapes are right below me right here uh, on these oak trees. Our stand that we've been hunting is over on this tree line behind us and we just felt like we're out of the game. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't really get that much time to hunt just because of filming and stuff. So we thought we'd move right in and see if we can catch this deer coming in here tonight. But uh, it's looking good. Like I said, that deer showed up the 28th and the 29th. Uh, right about 5.30, 5 o'clock, so fingers crossed he makes his way in here. If he does, it's going to be tight because we can't really see much up this hill up to our left, but we got all this bedding and all this CRP right here. Hopefully he shows up. We're going to tuck in here and be quiet and see what tonight brings. With deer beginning to move, tension is high as Drake waits, hoping that his aggressive move for the giant buck pays off. Back in northeast Missouri, Tyler Bailman watches as the plot begins to fill with deer. Wishbone's back early tonight. 
Looks like his doe's feeding out here on the plot. He just went in the woods. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing, but hopefully he makes his way back out here. That's far away, wasn't it? Yeah. I think he's gonna circle back around this side over here. Dude, there he is. There he is. He, he's gonna make a move. Dang it. A little far back. Well, that's who we came in here after. And I hit him a little bit far back, but I think I got some lever. He was quartering away, so. out early tonight all these does piled out and he come through that gap that he did last night he looped around him and he pushed him out of here and then he was making a beeline for it pushing that doe around man it's exactly what we wanted him to do as Tyler and Justin Lubrick decide on the next move Drake Lamb continues in his hope that the giant will soon revisit the scrape tree below him. gonna wrap it up for us here tonight it's been a really good night uh, we did see one mature buck I think we got a little bit of footage of him pushing a doe through this little waterway up here but um, other than that some three-year-old four-year-old bucks and uh, some younger bucks but uh, no no big deer I think maybe I'm gonna try and get back in here sometime this next week I've got a film bill in the next couple days so not real sure when I can get back out but uh, shaping up to be pretty good November so I'm looking forward to the rest of November this is our favorite time of the year everybody lives for these days so uh, hopefully we'll be back within the next week and uh, check back in with you guys Tyler and Justin decide the hit was quickly lethal and take up the blood trail on Tyler's buck. Well, that's a good sign. There's some bubbles in there. He's pumping blood. We're just gonna take our time and ease in down this ridge. We watched him go across it, run at full speed. It's been a little over an hour now, so we're gonna go ahead and ease on in here. <laughs> what do you make it? You can even make it a hundred yards. Oh my gosh, I'm speechless right now. If you guys remember, this is that wishbone buck that I walked late season last year. I can't say that I'll pass a deer that big very often, but it's post rifle season. And with this amount of food that we have in here, there's a really good chance that he's gonna stick and we think he's gonna do something special, but this is exactly what it's all about right here. It's about the animal itself and, and creating that storyline. And I can catch all the grief I want, but 
this is my first archery buck ever and it's a buck of a lifetime you know uh <laughs> I, I just don't know what to say you know uh this is what we live for justin he he taught me a lot and passing up these deer is hard to do but when it all comes together like this this is what i want to do and to enjoy these moments with my two of my closest friends it just said i was speechless i don't know what to say boys <laughs> <laughs> That is why you let me go. Jeez. This story all started in 2017. Uh, the same night that Justin's two deer actually had that big fight, he came out that evening later on by himself and fed in this exact food plot. And uh, a tremendous amount of work has went into this deer. Justin, Mitch, myself, uh, we came in here this year, planted this corn, and set this redneck blind specifically for this buck and uh, it allowed us to enter and exit this field in a way that we've never been able to do it before. We've always had to ha hunt it on a south wind and then on your way out, you'd push everything out. Well, this maze is allowing us to get in here and hunt this food plot and go undetected. And I think that was a big factor, you know, uh, to get this deer, but what an awesome story. I couldn't be happier. I tagged out on this five and a half, six and a half year old deer that we call Wishbone. And I, I can't really explain the excitement and the emotions that we got to share last night. It's why we do it. And uh, I'm just, I'm tickled to death. Thanks for tuning in to Midwest Whitetail. Owen Riegler is also hunting this evening in southern Iowa. Well, I'm actually kind of fired up today to be in here. This is a farm, well, it's not new to me. I've hunted this area for a long time, but we haven't hunted it at all this year. It's warmed up just a little. It's about 50 degrees, but it shouldn't slow them down any. It's a uh, west wind. It's going to be west-southwest here in a little bit bringing it across just like this, kind of across that terrace bean field there. There's two bucks in here I would like to see. There's one that's got split twos and split threes. It's a really nice deer. He looks fully mature. I don't have any history with that deer, but he looks like an old buck. And there's another one in here that's got split G2s. And I do know that deer. I've seen him for three years now, so he's definitely a five and a half, six and a half year old buck. Either of those two deer would be nice, but who knows what could be in here. I've only got, you know, like four cameras on this farm and I've only checked them twice. So there could be some kind of surprise in here that we don't know about. There's a lot of good area that, to draw from. So hard to say what might be in here, but we'll sit in here a few hours looking for a good sit. It should be fun. Owen's decision to change farms pays off. 
experiencing more action than he has during the past few hunts combined. Now he just needs the right buck. 150 miles to the northeast, back on the river farm, Mike Reed is hanging an observation stand with the goal of getting a better line on Merino. Soon deer are moving all over the farm. The giant buck makes its way into bow range, but Mike decides not to shoot, knowing the deer is only four years old. However, after seeing the huge antlers up close, and considering the fact that he is hunting in a pressured neighborhood, Mike has second thoughts. Maybe passing this buck was a huge mistake. Back in southern Iowa, Owen Riegler is still sitting over his corn plot, waiting for a mature buck. also enjoys great action with two big bodied bucks coming to the field after shooting light. All Owen can do is watch and hope for tomorrow. Tyler 
Tyler Bailman shot not only his best buck to date, but his first ever with a bow, showing that patience can produce great results. Drake Lamb now has a world-class buck on his radar, but with limited hunting time, he has to decide how aggressive to be and when to make his next move. Mike Reed had the biggest deer of his hunting career come into bow range and decided not to shoot. Now he's having serious second thoughts. Jared Mills took the day off after tagging a great buck the day before. Now he turns his attention to the big deer he's been hunting throughout October. Each day that goes by, he fears his chances decrease. The drama, the excitement, the ups and downs are finally here, and with them comes a year's worth of planning as we try to decide how to apply just the right amount of pressure. Enough to be in the game, but not so much that we educate the very deer we are hunting. Increasingly, we decide it is time to play our best cards. Dreams of bucks chasing does through the hardwoods are now reality. Dry leaves crunch beneath the chase. Biting northwest winds blow in our faces. And tags still unfilled all drive us onward. Is it time to sit in our best stands? If not now, when? This is when the chips slide across the table. The next few hands will produce some big winners. But win or lose, the game is awesome. Breathtaking even, because now we are playing for keeps. Now we are. Chasing November.